Hey, podcast listeners, it's April. The grass is starting to turn green. The flowers are starting to pop up. And that can only mean one thing. It's time for spring cleaning your website. On this episode of Lisey's All The Things podcast, three things. We tackle three of the things you should consider when spring cleaning your law firm's website. We go through what you should do related to attorney bios, the importance of focusing on the industries you serve, and some areas that can be overlooked in our day-to-day work on our websites, the footer, the CMS, and how it looks on mobile devices. I'm your host, Taryn Elliott, Director of Client Success and Marketing at Lisey, and I'm joined by Ray Ritter, Director of Client Service and Marketing at Lisey, and the guru for all things websites. So here's three things, this episode of Lisey's All The Things Podcast. Check it out. Hi, everyone. I am Taryn Elliott, the Director of Client Success and Marketing here at Lisey. And thank you for joining us for our April live stream um, of three things. And this is all about spring cleaning your website. I am joined by Ray Ritter, Director of Client Service and Marketing at Lisey, who is our website guru. And I'm very excited. It's April. Like spring is coming. I don't know about your neighborhood, but here there's like flowers have been popping up for a month. So I'm ready for it. Yes. Um, the flowers are definitely making their way out earlier this year than normal. Um, but I'm really looking forward to, you know, being able to open the windows again and wear flip flops and all of those kind of rite of passage things that, you know, that that's, April springs. Um, I mean, of course it could still snow in April. It could, <laughs> it could be freezing cold in May, but like we're getting there. Mm-hmm. Getting, getting past there. winter. I, so I actually don't like cleaning, but I love spring cleaning because it just, like you said, windows open. Mm-hmm. Like I will clean out the windowsill just to make sure I can open the window. <laughs> so. Sometimes I open the window and then I'm like, Ooh, my window still needs to be cleaned. <laughs> And now I'm cleaning the windows and that was not my intention, but I agree. I uh, don't particularly love cleaning. I like having a clean house. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so that's a bit of a problem, but I do like spring cleaning and I like the idea of really digging in and cleaning up the things that you don't normally deal with when cleaning your house, because I don't know about you, but I do not have time to get my house deep cleaned once a week. No, not the Martha Stewart way. Not no. here either. <laughs> no. So, well, while we're spring cleaning houses and, um, you know, kind of getting all of our lives, personal lives in order, this is also a good time to spring clean your website. Um, you know, we are always on our websites and looking at them And, you know, you know, occasionally it'll be like, Ooh, there's a typo that we didn't catch. Or, you know, this person is now admitted in a new state. Um, You know, we need to add that. We hadn't done that yet. Um, But there's a lot of things that in our day to day with our websites, we don't even think about. And so today we're going to talk about three of them. Um, Three of the ones that we thought were really important to consider or possibly overlooked. And so Ray, do you have anything to add before we jump into the three things? No, I'm ready to go. Okay. Well, I will hand it over to you for our first one, which is attorney bios, probably our first one and our biggest one. Right. And to be honest, I think that most people are routinely updating those things you mentioned, like the, is the most recent award, you know, a speaking engagement, you know, this person's now admitted in another state. I think that most you know, folks who are managing the website have that kind of hardwired, like you learn about it, you add it, you update on the website. Those bios should be getting updated routinely as those things happen. Now, with that said, you know, we, with the reason why we have this on our list for today is I think the part of the bio that does, that gets overlooked, that we really want you, we want everyone to look at in the spring, a couple times a year, is that narrative part of the bio. And, you know, I think a lot of people take a lot of time to write it in the beginning when the attorney comes, or perhaps when there's a relaunch of the website, looking at like, okay, is this in the right tone? Am I saying the things I want? 
but it still make, makes sense to routinely look at it. Um, actually, I recently spoke with um, some other folks at um, an LMA uh, program in the mid Atlantic. And one of the things that I harped on in that program was looking at your website through today's lens. Like, is there anything on that website that, you know, was perfectly neutral five years ago or whenever it was written, but today kind of sends red flags. Um, and actually this is interesting this week. Um, something like that popped up. We were, we're about to launch a website bio. We are reviewing the content for a very tenured, very respected attorney in this firm who you can read it. It seeps out. He loves what he does. He loves practicing law. And it said in the bio that this attorney uh, talks about courts and trials and sounds like a man with an addiction. Hmm. And, while we understand that the sentiment means he is just his whole world is law. It says like he goes on vacation and like goes into courts in other cities and wants to check out what's going on. And he loves the like, I love that. <laughs> he loves it. So, I mean, that's all great. That, that message is good, but the wording is sensitive. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, starting with the national like opioid, opioid crisis, um, you know, there's lots of people who are affected or have family members or friends who are affected by that. And then compound that with the fact that within the legal industry, there's, um, you know, other prevalent addictions with alcohol and other drugs and things so that, you know, to use that word in a way that is meant to shed positive light when it actually has just other you know, other things that we should be aware of that are not kind of off on the sideline. This is like front page of the paper um, subject matter with addiction. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it seems like a little thing, but it, it actually, he, he wrote about, he referenced that in a few places, again, to show basically he's obsessed with practicing law. He loves it so much. It's in his blood. It's in his DNA. But changing the language a little bit, um, because at the time that it was written, which I imagine was at least 10 years ago, I could be wrong. Um, but it was, you know, it was written well before they came to Lisi for us to help launch their new site. It just was something for us to flag. And I think that there's little nuggets of that that you'll find in your attorney's bios mm -hmm. that seemed completely neutral at the time it was written. You know, I'm not trying to like slap anyone's hand for putting it in there in the first place, but now that it's spring and we're doing this, you know, spring cleaning of the websites, now is a good time to think, to look at that narrative, the part that gets overlooked that should not be set and forget. Um, just one more thing about that narrative that I would say um, that, you know, is a little, it's just kind of a little harder aspect of um, reviewing the bios is, you know, does your bio, do, do the attorney bios answer the question, like, how does, how do you solve my problem? You know, I'm coming to your site. I'm a, a potential client. What problems do you solve? How can you help me? So it's important to think about, you know, I, you know, worked at a firm where 15 years ago when we launched a website, it started out with this lawyer is in this practice, this practice, this practice, and this practice. And while those were, that was a true sentence, <laughs> it wasn't really helpful for a person coming to the site to say, well, but I need help with this kind of problem. I can't tell from that sentence if you, if you can help solve my problem. So kind of front loading the problem solving factor is another recommendation as you go through and review the narrative of the bios. I think those are, those are the things that I want to drive home with reviewing the attorney bios as part of your spring cleaning. Well, and I think adding on to that too, like if you haven't stripped out jargon or, you know, defined terms that people might not understand, um, that goes a long way too when you're making these reviews. I know that there's kind of been a change in, over, it's been happening over the last many years of getting bios and just everything on a law firm website to be more focused on the user who might not have a legal background um, and to be easy to read but also, you know, tailored for your audience. I mean, maybe the people you work with are attorneys and they understand all of that. Um, and also the other thing I was going to say on that is consider if your practice has evolved as well. Um, you know, sometimes you add a practice area to the side 
but in the narrative, mm -hmm. you don't think to add new representative matters or really talk about maybe how you've developed a niche practice in your area of law. Um, so this is also a good time to kind of be thinking through those things as well, because you want to put your best foot forward and really portray what you're doing in your bio. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I think, you know, we talk about it a lot. Bios are one of the most important aspects of your law firm's website um, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. for so many reasons. So definitely. Mm -hmm. And they're the, they're the pages of your site that get the most views. So if you don't believe me, look at your Google Analytics. <laughs> Bios are getting looked at more than all the other pages. Um, so it's, that's where you want to focus some extra time. Perfect. Well, moving on, our next topic is footer, mobile, and CMS. And really, I just kind of combine these things that are important, but that might often be overlooked as you're kind of, you know, everyone thinks, oh, bios. And, you know, for some law firms, you could have 200 bios to look at. And that's mm -hmm. a big project. And as we said, that's really important. But these three things are things that are important because they contain information that when a prospect or a client needs it, they need it. And if they can't find it, um, that, that can be a problem and really kind of leave, you know, a bad taste in their mouth. So first of all, the footer, which is just the content you have at the very bottom of every single page. Um, just take a look at it, make sure everything's correct. You know, the grammar is correct, punctuation is correct, the content you have down there is correct. You know, for instance, maybe you added an office or you removed an office, you know, that got updated on your contact page, but did that get updated in the footer? Um, and also the the copyright year. Yes. And your your development company should set that up to automatically change when, you know, on January 1. But in the event they have not set that up to automatically update, you want that, that I mean, it's such a little thing that can make your site look like you haven't updated the whole site since whatever date that mm -hmm. is in there. Yes. And, you know, especially for a law firm, you want to make sure all your I's are crossed and all your I's <laughs> are dotted and your T's are crossed. <laughs> there we go. Um, because that's what people expect from you when they're hiring you to do their work. Mm -hmm. um, which also in the footer is often legal disclaimers. So generally, a legal you'll link to a legal disclaimer. So, of course, make sure all your link links work. Um, but definitely your links to the legal disclaimers. And it might not be a bad time to take a look at those as well to see if there's anything that changed. Um, and then a lot of times people have social media icons. And the thing here that you want to, of course, again, make sure the links work, uh, make sure that the symbol is correct. But also, have you added a presence on social media or stopped using any of them? So for instance, a lot of firms are starting to add Instagram. Maybe that hasn't been added to the footer yet. Um, Maybe you've decided, you know, for instance, like Facebook isn't for you and, you know, you could take that off or we don't see it so much now, but for a while we had a lot of firms who still had Google plus. She's going to say it. that. I just yes. saw one, a link to one recently and I clicked. I was like, where is this going to go? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was thinking that we were probably away from that, but it's a good example of how sometimes you have a platform and it just changes and it needs to be updated. Mm -hmm. um, and finally, for the footer, um, attorney advertising. And generally, this is something we go through when we launch websites or, you know, we look at websites, you know, do you live in a jurisdiction where the rules of professional conduct require you to have some kind of attorney advertising or other disclaimer on your website? Um, and to be fair, it doesn't need to be in the footer or the header. There's some other things to consider. So check your rules. This is especially important if you have a new office or even possibly a new attorney or an attorney admitted to a new jurisdiction, professional rules about, you know, when you're being held liable for following them vary. Uh, but definitely if you've had some changes, uh, check that out. And then the next thing that is sometimes overlooked is mobile, which of course, when designing a website, this is something that you consider, but you know, things happen or you add new pages. So just taking some time to really go through and look at your website on mobile, which is, you know, phones and tablets, and they all come in various sizes. Um, and there are tools that can help you, you know, what does my website look like on this device versus that device? Um, but keep in mind, 
on mobile, it's not just a little tiny version of your website. You are presenting the information in a way that's easy to navigate and easy to understand on your mobile phone. So um, the example on this slide here, this is not what their website looks like on a desktop. But as you can see, when you go to this homepage, it's really easy to find where you want to go next. Mm -hmm. um, also, as, as it's warming up outside, I recommend doing mobile testing and review outside on your phone, <laughs> maybe in the sunshine. I mean, I candidly, I think through that. Like if I have to do mobile testing on a site, I think, well, if I don't need to be tied to my mm -hmm. space. Where can I be? So a lot of times it happens like on my, in my patio. <laughs> yeah. Or even this is, you know, if you have a long commute, you could do that. That's kind of the nice thing about mobile. Mm -hmm. um, and as you're going through all the pages, make sure like, especially pages like contact info, news, even bios, the pages people are most likely to view on mobile are easy to read and clean. You're not having to zoom in or slide back and forth to get the content. Um, consider if you added any new pages this year, um, especially if you kind of changed the way a template looked, you know, is that rendering properly on mobile? Um, and last thing, just make sure your phone numbers are clickable and your directions are linked. Um, and then finally in this section of things that might be forgotten about, uh, the CMS or the back end. And this is really just kind of going in and looking at things such as, you know, are the fields labeled and easy to use? Is it intuitive? You know, if I wasn't adding this, would somebody else be able to figure out what might need to be there? Or is it labeled in a way that I can consistently enter the same information? Um, your, especially for pages you frequently update like bios and news. Um, mm -hmm. And then your asset library. And I know I'm guilty of this. Um, you know, we get so busy, we tend to just upload everything into a general file. So this is absolutely the best time of year to make sure you're going in and saying, you know, images go here in these folders and documents go here in these folders and downloadable items go here or whatever your file system is, but just make sure it's organized. Make sure everything is clearly titled, especially items you download. You don't want somebody to download an item and then they have it on the desktop and it's you know some kind of shorthand name that you use internally or it's you know really generic and people are like, what is this file on my desktop? Mm -hmm. um, and also, are they even still available on your website? If they're not available on your website, you can just go ahead and clean them out. Mm -hmm. um, and on the subject of downloads, this isn't necessarily happening in your CMS. It might also be happening in your marketing automation tool. But if you have an item that's downloaded from your website, is it being delivered in the way that it is expected to? And you know, we see it happen all the time. Just a random glitch or a system update causes something to break along the way. And there's nothing more frustrating than trying to get information from a website, especially if you're, you know, deciding who to hire and not being able to get that. Mm -hmm. so, on, the, on your ahead. comment, oh sorry, <laughs> on your comment about the CMS, I think that actually just came up with Taryn, with you and I talking to mm -hmm. um, a client recently who who this was a site that our you know head of development did not was not involved with. And the client said, you know, how do I, why is this bio not publishing the way I expect? And there was a field that had to be filled out in order. Mm -hmm. There was like a threshold. If this field is filled out, it will publish. If this field is left empty, it will not publish. And in fact, I think there were two fields and I'm sure at the time that that site was developed, the developer thought, well, of course, how would a bio ever be posted without like body, you know, the main narrative or how would it ever be posted? And without? Sometimes like and specifically on that website, like that's a differentiator because you were trying to accomplish a secondary thing as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yeah, sometimes, you know, in the design and development phase, we miss mm -hmm. issues that might come up down the road. And this is a perfect example. So, so the solution is not to change the development of that site. The solution is to to just make a little note by the field header on the back end of the CMS, so that you know when the person who's work who was working at the when the site launched knew how to do it, 
And then the next person knew how to do it. But now like the fourth person down the line who wasn't involved at the beginning, doesn't know Mm -hmm. the answers to have those little like cheat sheets can be really helpful. Um, I mean, I find them helpful on sites that we do build because I mean, it's dozens and dozens and dozens of sites and they each have their own unique build. Mm -hmm. What if you don't remember some like really obscure detail? Wow. Would it be great if you had a note on it and the note was where you need it? when you need it. (laughs) The one I find that also that really benefits is image uploads, especially if you have to upload multiple versions of an image. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, do I need the square one here? Do I need a rectangle one here? Do I need a very small thumbnail? Do I need Mm -hmm. a larger photo? So I always really appreciate knowing, um, okay, like this is the pixel size sizes that I need for this image here. And these are the pixel sizes I need for this image over here. Yeah. It just makes it easier for everybody. And it, I mean, it takes like an extra moment. So, mm-hmm. and, and the, the thought like, okay. Yeah. And, you know, on that note as well, as you're going through this review of your CMS, it's also a good time to say, is there something I'm doing every time? And it seems like it's taking me longer or more steps. And is mm-hmm. there maybe a way to go back to my development team and say, Hey, is there a streamlined way to do this? Or, you know, our practice has evolved. And so we want to change the way we convey this information. Like, you know, our, you, a couple hours of your time now in development might, you know, save the marketing team internally a lot of time down the road. Um, and, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes there are just projects that become phase two projects, you know, it's something that we thought of that was out of scope and we didn't, weren't able to execute during the initial development because we would have launched, you know, too late or, whatever the case might be. And, you know, you just, it's like moving into a new house. You have all these plans and you think, as soon as I move in, I'm going to do these 15 things and you get to about five Mm -hmm. of them. And then sometimes you kind of forget about the other ones. So this is also another time to go back in and say, Hey, there were these other ideas that we had that might make sense to implement now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then finally, our third thing, I'll hand it back over to you, Ray. All right. Um, So our third thing um, of our three things for spring cleaning your website is is focusing on industry pages or really just focusing on industry in general. So if possible, it would be great to create new page types for industry and have those be like a landing page so that the people come into your site, the clients, prospects kind of can frame their experience to their, to their world. You know, Hey, I work in the entertainment industry. What are the things that you do for me? What, like, I know maybe, maybe a person coming to the site is coming here for, um, you know, contracts and negotiations related to, something in the entertainment industry. But if you have a full page of these are all the ways that we service this industry and we can, and, you know, present that in context here, maybe someone would find that, you know, Hey, I didn't know you also do intellectual property. And that's something, you know, my, I need, or my entertainers need or whatever that is. (laughs) Um, I could think of other examples like employment and labor law issues would be important when working in this, in this particular industry, or, um, you know, an example is like, you know, the finances and venture capital, managing venture capital funds and that kind of thing. So those might be things that the person coming to the site doesn't even know that you do or that they need it. So, It may not be possible or may not be easy to create these new pages, to, you know, develop them out, design them out, um, write all the content, you know, that, that might be a heavier lift, something to put kind of on the side burner. But if that's not possible, then I would think about having a section on at least a practice page. These are the industries we service Mm -hmm. for this type of work and then linking to the other related practices for that might impact or might service this industry that you're talking about. So you could probably get creative within the current design or really kind of offer more of a full service view into what you do for an industry with a full industry page. And, you know, I was, I was actually thinking about this where, um, you know, getting ready to pack for a trip coming up and I'm shopping online for 
children's swimsuits. <laughs> and then, right. And then I see like, oh, and swim goggles and fast dry towels and, you know, all these other things. And it's like, aha, you know that I'm looking for this. Maybe you could show me something that's like really close to it that I might also need. And that's, you know, when I was in my last big firm in house, we were always talking about cross servicing, like how yes. can you bring in a client and then not silo them in one service or one industry, but, or pardon me, practice area. How can you service that, that client in other services in other ways? So, um, I think that's kind of like the secret sauce to keeping clients longer, right? If they're yes. plugged into different um, service lines. So um, anyway, like I said, I think that's something you can do. There, there can be a big, a big lift with development or a smaller lift with really just updating the content on the page. And again, that's something that we don't think about throughout the year as you're looking at your website, as you're adding new news and events and things. Um, but, you know, hey, this is the time for spring clean cleaning. Take a, a good look at it. You know, again, and this too, you can sit on your couch. You know, you don't even have to be your desk. <laughs> you know, how would we like rethink doing this um, or communicating how we provide services to folks in different industries. Well, and I love this because, you know, as soon as you were talking about this, having also been in house, like, yeah, like cross serving clients is, it's a big discussion for marketing part departments. It's a big discussion for business development departments, if they're separate. Um, it's a big discussion for client success teams within law firms. It's a big discussion for attorneys. So this is one that really hits everybody. Um, and even, you know, one way to approach it would maybe be to talk to your accounting department or your finance department who might be able to give you a list of clients or, you know, even further than that, categorize them. And you can really sit down and say, okay, here are the clients we have here, are the industries that, you know, they break down in, and, and here are the services that they're either already purchasing from us or that they could be. And really, I, you know, I love the idea that if you don't have the resources to build out completely new industry pages, um, you know, there are ways to definitely incorporate that information into practice area pages. And I think we're seeing clients do that a lot, where we're seeing more and more clients are putting the related practices links on those practice area pages. Um, because as you said, we, we know the more um, invested a client is with a firm, the more likely they are to uh, keep working with the firm. And really, it just solidifies that relationship, especially for potential clients. You know, if you're working in the entertainment industry, you might be thinking of all the different legal services that you need for your business, but you also might not be thinking of that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, much better to be able to get it all from one place. It's just easier and more efficient. So I really, I love this. Thank you so much for sharing it. Well, Ray, we have gone through all three things. Anything else to add um, before we wrap up here? No, I'm just, I'm really excited for spring. Somehow more <laughs> this year than ever, I'm ready for it. <laughs> yes, I feel like it's been a very dreary winter. Yeah. Like uh, we didn't get a ton of snow. Same. And so like, it's just been cold and gray. Yeah. Well, I am definitely also ready for spring. I'll take, I'll take spring rain. That's fine with me. Yeah. But yeah. I just, I need a break from the winter for a little bit. And I like the winter. So <laughs> that's saying something. Well, thank you to Ray for joining me on this and sharing her insights on spring cleaning your law firm website. Um, thank you to all of you for either tuning into our live, live stream or um, catching this on our website or on our podcast. We will be back next Friday at 1230 p.m. Eastern time on LinkedIn live streaming and ask me anything. And this is a really relevant topic. It's ask me anything about Google Analytics 4, which is rolling out this summer, whether you like it or not. Um, <laughs> Google's been talking about it for a long time. You know, we've been talking about it too, but it's April and that um, drop dead deadline will be here before you know it. So tune in next Friday for Ask Me Anything on Google Analytics 4. Um, and thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Bye, everybody. Bye. 
You have been listening to All the Things, the podcast from Legal Internet Solutions Incorporated, where we bring you all the things. Whether it's three things we learned, hearing from a legal marketing insider, an Ask Me Anything session, or that one more thing we've been dying to tell you all month long, but couldn't. That's all the things. Our next episode will be out in a week wherever you get your podcasts. And you can join us for the live events every Friday at 1230 Eastern on our LinkedIn channel for our live stream where we bring you all the things live.